It's Nicole and today I am sharing with you the first project from the June Flavors of the Month kit from Scrapbook Room. Here you can see the entire kit and a photo of the embellishment add-on. I did not use that in today's layout but I did want to go ahead and just share with you guys what it comes with and then this is the sketch that I am going to be following along with. It was designed by one of the other design team members and it always goes up in the Facebook group so that anybody can kind of play along with it for the month. So as always, I like to open up the kit, go through and kind of just take a first look, get a first impression of, you know, everything that's there. This one is going to be my mind's eye gingham foundry. So it's going to come with two sheets of walnut cream cardstock and then three pattern papers, and they are Sunday Best, Cornflower, and Front Porch. Um, I definitely think that these were a good mix of like different size and different colors as far as being able to kind of mix and match from front to back. And with it being sort of a revamping of my mind's eye, it is that super like thick cardstock that they had years ago, so that was kind of nice. Um, my kit also came with a sheet of stickers, which it's going to vary kit to kit. So I didn't, I didn't go and peek online to see on my mind's eyes website what the other part was. I was pretty happy to see that the sheet that I had was just kind of really pretty florals and leaf images. And then you can see the mixture of die cut pieces that I got which is from the ephemera pack which again that gets split up into different kits I think you get like one sixth of a pack so it's it's a still a good amount without kind of being overwhelmed with an entire pack of die cuts so when I first looked at the sketch it's not one that I would normally pick out on my own and that's not to say that it's a bad sketch or anything like that. It's actually a pretty um, pretty easy to use sketch. It's got large size photos, multiple photos on it, which is something that I do enjoy. But stacked layers is something that's just kind of not in my wheelhouse. And it's not a style of sketch that I would normally pick out if I was picking out a sketch. But... Part of using these kits and part of being on the design team was something that I had kind of looked forward to, to be able to stretch myself creatively. And so when I get assigned something like a sketch that I normally wouldn't pick or maybe a formula with layers that are, you know, sizes that I wouldn't commonly work with, I like to just lean into it and kind of see what happens. So my take on the sketch was I just went ahead and put in my photos into three by fours. However, I've got two that are portrait and two that are landscape. And so I'm just going to not necessarily change the sketch as far as where the photos are, but I'm looking at where the photos are on the sketch is basically just representing that area in the center of the layout grouped together. And then because mine are different orientations, I'm just going to make it work based on my photos. And then the paper layers, which is kind of nice about this type of sketch, is they don't give you like cutting guides or you know, what size any of the layers are. So you can really just go with what's going to work best for you. So for me, I know that I like to see a lot of the pattern paper. So I knew initially when I looked at it that I was probably going to make my paper layers a little larger than what's depicted on the sketch and maybe cover up more of the background, if that makes any sense. Sometimes I can look at a sketch and know that I want to follow it completely and sometimes I can look at a sketch and just say no I kind of want to just almost like where you kind of zoom in on your phone where I just want to sort of stretch things and I pretty much just eyeballed everything and just chose the sides of the papers that I personally liked best. Um, there was a couple sheets of pattern paper in the pattern paper add-on, which I also have this month, 
that I really wanted to use. But when I do sort of my first run through of any kind of videos or projects with the kit, I really, really do try to stick to just the basics that comes with the kit just to kind of share that you can get completely different looks from these kits only using the kits. And then anything that you would sort of pull out from your stash would then just kind of be like extra icing on the cupcake, if that makes any sense. So for me, I do try to stick to just the kit. And then sometimes I'll dip into the embellishment add-on if there's kind of something going on in there that is like really catching my eye. The embellishment add-on for this one was the, I don't know what they call there, if it's just chipboard, but it's just like a 6 by 12 chipboard sheet. Super pretty stuff. I chose not to pull anything off of it just because I originally wasn't sure where I was going. And by the time I got done, I didn't feel like I needed it. So I just stuck to the die cuts that came with the kit and the stickers that came with the kit. And then in order for me to layer pattern papers like this, I like to ink my edges. So I just used a dark gray ink and I inked the edges of all of the pattern papers, the edges of my photos, and then the edges of the cardstock mats that I also put my photos on, which I just used the second sheet of cardstock that came with the kit to do that. And for me, it just kind of helps me distinguish, I guess, the, the papers and separate them when I look at them. To me, inking the edges of stuff is kind of a personal preference. Um... So sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't. A lot of times it's more of like the brand of paper. So for me, a lot of times my mind's eye, just the feel of the paper makes me want to ink the edges. Whereas something that's more like bright and white based, so something like a Doodlebug or a Bella Boulevard, I typically won't ink the edges, but that's not 100% like set in stone either. Now... Pretty much the only thing I did use for my stash was some alphabet dies to go ahead and make a title. I printed photos from Mother's Day of 2021, so there wasn't necessarily anything in the die cuts, in the sticker sheet, or in the chipboard that I felt like I could make a title to indicate that it was a Mother's Day Um event. So I like to just make my own like thickers or make my own type of chipboard. So I took the leftovers of the second sheet of cream cardstock and I cut two of each letter and then I cut a top layer out of the blue pattern cardstock and I just stack them together with liquid glue. It's I know it's time consuming, I know it's messy, but it's to me it's relaxing, like that's the kind of thing that I'll do when I'm catching up on YouTube videos or listening to a podcast, that kind of thing. I also was able to use the leftover cardstock to go ahead and print my journaling on it. I could have printed it on white cardstock, but I figured I already have the scrap of the cream colored cardstock and then I'm not introducing like a vibrant bright white to this layout that's very cream based. So I just printed out a little bit of information about our Mother's Day, which um, we just kind of hung out at home. I had mentioned to my husband that I was basically killing my phone battery during the day because I was reading on, I have Kindle Unlimited and then I also pay for Scribd, which is similar to Kindle Unlimited. So between the two, I sucked down a lot of books, but... The blue light on your phone is pretty bad, especially at night. Um, again, it, and it's it's so easy to, you know, be reading and then get a notification and switch over and start scrolling social media for an hour. So I had, you know, I had told him that I wanted to go and pick up a Kindle Paperwhite specifically. Plus, knowing that summer break was coming, the Kindle is actually waterproof, so I don't feel bad taking it and pulling it out at the water park and, you know, sitting there and reading my book. So, it's definitely been, like, my sidekick for the last couple weeks. I've used it pretty much every day. Um, 
and it's so, I don't know, it's so cute and little. But then after that, I pretty much just hung out upstairs in my craft room because these photos were from a month ago. I was working on different deadlines and editing videos and stuff upstairs while my husband and my kids made dinner and I didn't have to do any of it. So that was really nice. Um, our, our typical weekend meal, we tend to have the same kind of things on the weekend, um, which doesn't bother me. I'm one of these people that I like to stay home. I like the same things over and over again. <laughs> so something like a quiet sort of celebration like this. And I knew that my kids were super excited to, you know, help their dad cook. They like to be involved in stuff like that. They like doing stuff with him. So I just kind of disappeared upstairs, let them do their thing and managed to get some stuff done without sort of having to pop back and forth to go, you know, prep vegetables or go, go do something else that I would normally be doing on the weekend. So I probably should have trimmed some of this stuff out of the video, but I knew that I was probably going to go on a rambling tangent because that happens, but it's fine. So I, at this point, I just kind of go back and forth and figure out what stickers do I think I want to layer. I will cut die cuts in half. So like I cut that, I cut the top of the tag off that one piece. There's no point in me tucking the whole tag behind there. I can just use the top of it. That gives me that extra little like freebie pattern for another layout. Um, some of the stickers I purposely put behind the title letters and the journaling because when they were sitting on that yellow or like goldish plaid paper, they were kind of getting lost. So my solution is basically to find something of a contrasting color and just pop it behind there. You don't necessarily need to see that it's a, it's a flower sticker. It, to me, it's just, I need something behind there so that you can actually see what's on top. And then I lucked out that one of the die cuts that I had was a phrase called, that said daydreamer. So I cut off the dreamer part and was able to kind of DIY the other part of my title. And that's typically what I try to do with these kits is once I look at the kit, I try to come up with photos that I think will work with the theme or the colors or the feel of the line. And then I will try to come up with a way to make a title with what came with my kit. And if not, I pull out my alphabet dies. To me, that's just a super easy way because I know that there's enough paper in the kit that I can make my own letters and they're going to match specifically to whatever kit like whatever theme colors and stuff Rochelle has picked out for that specific kit uh, the last thing that I did was I remembered to put the date I just use roller date stamp things and usually just do it in a corner somewhere I have a stack that I actually need to go back and do that on because I noticed when I was editing videos in the last couple weeks that I was not putting the date on there. So I'm kind of kicking myself for that. So as always, if you are looking for more information on the kits, if you are looking for more information on the Facebook group, go ahead and look in the description box below. If you do end up checking out the store or signing up for the kit, be sure to leave a note and let Rochelle know that Nicole sent you. And I will catch you guys in another video. Bye!